He's back. He's back. Well, yeah, baby. I decided I need to step up my excitement after watching you and Chris. <laughs> no, it's just fun, man. It, I, it's just fun being able to do what we do. We're lucky to do it. Well, that's the difference between you and I. You're, we always joke, we're sizzling steak. So Jeff gives me the tough ones. He's a hard guy. Give him the hard things to do, and then you make him feel good. So, but it's a good combination. See, that's a mindset too, though, right? Because it's sure. all fun. It's it's all fun, and you know we've got, you know it's 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 simple, right? I want to hit a couple of these chats that are coming in because I didn't see it when we were just kind of going before. I just read them all. How do you do that? 40,000 and a quarter. We have so many agents here. There's one on every corner and 20 of them in between. I don't want to suck. How do you do it? How do you make 40,000 bucks in a quarter? An interesting question. Do a third of what the people that do 120,000 a quarter do. <laughs> well, we'll break right. it down there. How you got to you surround yourself by people that are doing that. We have a whole host. I, I would say, well, every quarter we have, we, prior to COVID, we did do a top agent luncheon and we'd invite 80 people and the minimum to qualify was 25,000 a quarter. So I would say probably if 80 people made 25 grand, probably 40 made 40 grand a quarter. Yep. And when you hang around with people like that, it, it, you expand your thinking and your brain goes, oh, how did Roger Bannister beat the four minute mile? He decided he could. And then once he did it, everybody else did it. So it's kind of like that. And, and it's it's just simple numbers, right? If you make 7,000 bucks a check, how many $7,000? You need six deals. You've got, how many weeks do you have in a quarter? Right, you've got 15 weeks. You need to do six deals. Do the math. You gotta get a deal every, what, 12 days? So talk to people. That's it. That's my market's in Illinois and many people are moving out. I know they're all coming to Florida. That means good. Great get some get some listings and then send them our way. We'll get you referral fees on the back end of it all. So, <laughs> all right. So let's talk about art of real estate, art of life betterment, because I think this is kind of fun little segue when I, let's go back to New Jersey, right? When you and I were sitting there probably had, we probably overserved ourselves a few beers. Probably. And, and we were talking about at that time, the market was not doing well. No. And we were not having fun. We were not making money. And I think that was a big turning point in a lot of things because we, we made the decision that the business plan became have fun, make money. Right. And surround ourselves with cool people. What's that? We were there for a funeral. Yeah, we were, which was not fun. Right. So that makes you question yourself. So is this worth it? Is we're just going to die someday? We're not having a lot of fun doing this. That's got to become the new mission. Have fun, make money. Have fun, make money. And and enjoy yourself, guys. Surround yourself with people that you like to be around, right? I, I actually love hanging out with the agents that we have. I like them. They're fun people, right? There's most of them, a couple of you, you know, we'll get you out soon, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> just kidding. No, but it, it's important, guys. You get to choose who you work with. Why are you going to work with a jerk customer? You don't have to, right? Why are you going to do with a crappy deal? You don't have to, right? Unless you're reactive and you're just dealing with what falls on your lap, then you don't have much control, right? But if you actually want to take control of your life and take control of your business, do it, right? So we came up with the art of real estate, what well, dad came up with the art of real estate and the art of life betterment as evolved. And it's a step-by-step -step act of actually how this works. So I'm going to share the screen and pull it up real quick. Let's go through it. Art Here's of life betterment. It's really a paradigm shift from the art of real estate to the art of life betterment because real estate really isn't real estate. Real estate is just talking to people and helping them figure out what they want and helping them find a way to get it. And what really people want is to have the better life. So we changed the name of the whole concept, which is a summary, by, by the way, our dad, he's got one, well, he's got a bunch of single-minded thoughts that he never, 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 never lets up. And one is called simplicity. Make everything simple. So the art of life betterment is a simple, simple, but not easy plan to get you focused on doing real estate the way we teach it, right? And it kind of centers on the concept that you're not in purgatory. You're not stuck doing a menial job forever. This is a, a 90 day period of time. We can all focus and do some tough things for 90 days, 
And at the end of 90 days, we have to step back and evaluate and say, do I want to do this again? Or do I want to mix it up and learn something new? So it's all in your control. So how do you want to do this, Jeff? You want to kind of just go through the... the yeah, let's go, yeah through. let's go through it. I'm getting some I'm feedback, getting feedback on, on Are you opening up two open applications, applications over there? Me, no. I, I, hear, I, hear, you, you, I hear me, I hear me and echo. echo. So what we did here is, there it goes. It's not doing it anymore. So we broke this down into three sections, empower, educate, and encourage. That's the mantra of our company, right? Empower, educate, encourage, power, educate, encourage. So there's three steps. The first step is empower, right? Who am I? What are my strengths? What are my goals? And what's my schedule? Second thing is educate. What do I need to learn in order to make that happen? And encourage is what kind of coaching and support do I need? So we just simplified into three chunks, empower, educate, and encourage. And that's what we have. So the first step is the... Understanding, we talked about reintroducing sales to the real estate business, right? Most real estate companies don't teach this stuff, but sales is really about the, being in rapport. And Jeff will tell you a thousand times over this couple day period that people like people who are like themselves, right? So as a salesperson, if you can, and this is not manipulative in any way, shape or form, this is customer service. If you can understand your primary personality style and you can learn to identify your customer's personality style, then you can adapt your style to theirs to make them feel much more comfortable. So step one is to understand your power, your, your personality style. And th that is the most important part because self-awareness is the absolute key to success in life. You need to know where you aren't likable right to some and you need to know where you are likable to others because what's likable to some is not likable to others and it's not right or wrong but you just need to understand what what's going on so that's the that's the issue so let's talk about that for a second i'm going to switch back to, to this for a second here and um let's hit it it goes back to this from a self-awareness standpoint is, let me, be, let me go back to this present view, and then we'll go back to that form in a second. What's the lifestyle that you want? We talked about, like what puts the big ass smile on your face to do this? What type of clients do you want? What kind of business do you want? What kind of schedules do you want? The self-awareness is the most important, is knowing truly who you are, recognizing, this is the most important part of going into neutral, is figuring out who you're actually dealing with. So. Are you a D and I and S or C? And then more importantly, is the person you're presenting to, are they D's, I's, S's or C's? And then how are you gonna skillfully connect yours with theirs? And that's the whole million dollar sport, right? Is just that. And most people just walk around life being them, okay? Which is fine, but just know that you're completely repelling everybody else who just doesn't like that, which is okay. And some people just don't care and they just, they, they talk to enough people that they intentionally attract those who like them and intentionally repel people away, right? If you're going to go at scale, that's something you could do. But if you're trying to get into a niche, into a one neighborhood, you're going to have to adapt to different types of personalities if you want to connect with a broader percentage of population in that group. Does that make sense? So you could just go out and just be you as long as you have enough scale to attract out of that big masses because you're gonna repel a bunch of people and attract a bunch of people. And as long as there's enough that you attract, you could just do that. Unless you wanna use some skill and be able to connect with people that you normally wouldn't wanna connect with if it's just a skill set. You know, a and real think, simple example of that would be, you know, the stereotypical car sales guy that yeah. runs up to a woman without first assessing her demeanor. Hey baby, you'd look great in that car. You know, he's gonna repel most people. But every once in a while, he finds somebody who, who likes that strategy. But if he would actually sharpen up and learn how to greet people properly, he would probably make more sales. That's right. And then from us, from our standpoint, we need to know what you are because it helps us. I mean, guys, we can, we can deliver the same message a million different ways. That's just something we've been doing for almost 30 years now is the same conversation, the same similar situation in different ways. So to say something to a high D is totally different than the way you sell it to a high eye 
which is totally different than the way you sell your idea to a C and to an S, right? So you need to understand that. So the high D is just not going to go and do it because of the time period, not a bunch of it, but a high D, summarize a high D personality, Craig, what would you, what are the, let's, let's stereotype for a moment. A good word, dominant. Bossy, flashy, controlling. Director, Bossy. dictator, oh. right? Yeah, the type of person, that, high D personality. These are the social cues. They're driving the dark black Beamer, right? Or the dark black Escalade, Craig, <laughs> right? They're wearing the jewelry. Flashy, they're doing flash. flashy, right? But they're doing the stuff to make you think and know that there's somebody, right? So there's a high D. So if you're going to go on a presentation and you're pulling into a driveway and you've got the, the seven series or I eight black BMW and you see all the stuff sitting around the house and they want you to know there's somebody. So you better acknowledge it. And, and a high D personality doesn't want your fluffy sales pitch. They want it direct to the point and go. So it's very direct. Okay. So you just need to know that's who you present. So the I personality is the interpersonal. They're inspirational. They're more impulsive. These are the people that are people, people, and they're direct diametrically opposed to the high D personality because that high D personality just wants, give me my information, get out. The high I wants to hang out. That's a whole different thing. D does not want to hang out with you at all. They, they want their info. So the problem, the challenge is a lot of agents in this industry are high eyes, right? And a lot of your customers are not. So you might think that they love you, but inside they're like, shut up, tell me what my house is worth and get out of my house, right? And those of you who appreciate that quickly will show up and say, listen, I know you're a busy guy. I get it. Let's just get straight down to business. Here's what the house is worth. What's going on? I got time if you want to talk. If not, that's my presentation. They're going to say, see you. Thank you. Goodbye. Where do I sign? Right? If you can do that, if a high eye has the, the ability to go into neutral and to present right, you can relate to all of these people, but you actually have to consciously think about who you're, who you're dealing with. So that's why you started with knowing what you are, right? And you have to appreciate that you're a high I by nature, right? Or a high D or a high C. Your high C's are your, your analyticals, your calculating, right? Critical thinking. They want data. They're more cautious, right? They, they want to crunch, right? Numbers. That's what the C's want. And none of these are right or wrong. It's just the way that their, their DNA structure just kind of created them, right? Yeah. So you have to sell differently to these people. The same example about the guy that says, let's get down to the point. Here's your bottom line. You use that with the C and you're in trouble because you're going way too fast for them. C doesn't want the bottom line. C wants to know the top line and how you got to the bottom line step by step to make sure it adds up, right? And which is great as long as you acknowledge it. But if you don't do that with the C, they're gonna smell B BS and they're not gonna to wanna to talk with you. You're gonna blow trust because you didn't care enough to give them what they want. And all they wanted was data, right? Cause that's how they process information. The high I don't even bring data. They don't care. They wanna know how fun is the sales process gonna be and how much money they're gonna get at the end. And they wanna have a glass of wine and bullshit with you. Right, it's a whole different listing presentation. That way, as we get into the listing presentation tomorrow, our listing present takes all that into account. So you're, what you're learning today is already been incorporated into that. So we address the D concerns, the C concerns, the I and the S concerns. And we also add in the other stuff you'll be learning more about shortly with a video, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. That's right. That's right. And so it all plays into it. This is, this is building. And your high S personality, just as a reminder, those are your, I just call them sweet. Right? They're more service oriented, they're supportive role. They, you're not gonna push them into anything. They don't want to be overwhelmed with data. They just want to feel comfortable that you're not screwing them over is really what it is. So your, your pitch is completely different, right? but the process is the same. And that's what I really wanna, at the end of Wednesday, I want you guys walking out of here totally comfortable that the exact same list, pre, listing presentation process happens to all four of these people just in a different way. It's the exact same words, it's just a different delivery, right? It's faster or it's more fun or it's more analytical or it's softer, right? It's just the exact same words, the exact same pitch, the exact same deal. Or even my voice is changing when I'm even talking about S's, right? It just softened down. That's just the way that it is with an S. And then you talk to a high D, it changes, it goes faster. It's, it's the game, guys, it's a sport. So that's what we're gonna be really going on. So I just wanted to hit that real quick as we um, back out on that. 
So, cause that's step one is understanding your strengths. Now on this thing, we'll send out the link, maybe, um, put, maybe you post this link in the chats while we're talking the, um, the more advanced personality profile test, which is awesome. Dad does this a lot and it's like 12 bucks or whatever it is, but you can go do it and really get a good blend of what your true personality states are. But for this topic here, this is enough to know your high D, I, S, and C. Once you really in, are intrigued by this aspect, you want to do the advanced one that gives you your blend. And you can do one to your spouse, your buddy, your business partner, whatever it is, to see kind of how you guys relate to each other. Because it's an eye-opening experience, that one is too. So this is all just step one. Who are you? Right? Because that's going to dictate how we run our business plan from that point in time. So now you know, let's say that you're a DISC. It doesn't matter. Right? So that's what it is. Now, what are your goals? This is, this is it. Now, it used to be all about the five-year plan, right? Where are you going to be five years now? Who are you living with? Who are you, what's going on? Are you in a relationship? You're not in a relationship. You have kids. How old are they? How old are you? Where are you living? What's your daughter? All that stuff is important. But I think life has proven in the last few months for us that it's good to have that vision, but it's hard to predict, okay? But you know where you're going to ultimately get there. You just don't know how. So this is kind of your GPS coordinates of what kind of lifestyle you're going to be living five years from now. And it's completely up to you. Because in a five-year period, guys, you can pretty much do anything in that period of time. It's a lot of time, man. Five well, years is a huge. It's pretty much proven that we underestimate, we overestimate what we can do in, the, in one year, and we severely underestimate what we do in three years. Like the girl we were chatting back and forth with before, she right now can't think about making $40,000 in a quarter, right? Yeah. Like in one year. But probably could see it happening in two years and in three years it could be eighty thousand dollars a quarter so we underestimate what we could do in a longer period of time we overestimate what we could do at the beginning that's right and it goes down to your why and your belief and your mindset right i mean that girl could go knock on one street and her commission check could be forty thousand bucks per sale right? right if if her mindset allowed her to go do that someone's doing that there are absolutely houses are selling it's nice to get a hundred thousand dollar commission check go get one right you know how to do it go talk to people who live in those houses and sell one that's all you got to do so that's the primary goal primary aim is that five-year issue and so that's good for us to know where we're ultimately going but let's get tactical into one year and then super tactical into this quarter because all i care about right now especially those who i'm working with closely is what are we gonna do over the next 90 days? Because I can tell you that's gonna stay relatively consistent right now. So let's get focused on what we can do over this quarter, which turns into your why. So, you know, you're seeing, you talked earlier, you know, 25,000 bucks a quarter, 40,000 bucks a quarter, 30,000, 10,000, 50,000, it doesn't matter. But you have to have that why that's exciting to you, right? And then we're gonna be realistic about how we're gonna make that happen. So let's take an example. And let's walk it through on this one, Craig. Let's say, let's say it's um, thirty thousand bucks a thirty thousand bucks a quarter. That's one hundred twenty thousand bucks a year. Just right. just a detail. So I want my lifestyle is one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. And well, let me back that up because I like I like to take the, what I call the money question approach. Yeah, I think everybody watching needs needs to have to answer these questions. Question number one: How much money does your lifestyle consume right now? What's your budget? Right. If your household to pay your cars and your insurance and your rent or your mortgage payment, all the things and the clothes and the food and dining out, what are you spending a month? And let's say that's five thousand dollars a month. Ever, do this, guys. Ever, write down this number. Make sure that you it's, do this. It's really, it's only three questions. It's very simple. But you should know. Add up all your credit card bills. Add up everything you're spending. See what you're spending a month. And then be honest and look at your household income. And how much income is coming into your home, not from real estate. And this is a big issue for a lot of real estate agents, right? Because a lot of real estate agents have other income coming into their household that will fund the lifestyle without them doing anything. And this is where it gets, I think it's one of the, personally, I think it's one of the biggest challenges real estate people have. So let's say you need 7,000 a month to float your household budget to live like you're living now. And let's say your significant other or your alimony or your child support or whatever income, investment income you have is bringing in 5,000 a month. Then all you need to do is make up the gap of $2,000 a month. 
that's all you have to do to get by, right? And that's not hard because you do one deal every three months and bring in 2000 bucks and you're getting by, right? So one of the challenges becomes expanding our thinking because we are severely pushing the, uh, the limitless, the abundance of this industry, right? So when you can create the why that says, you know what, I've got student debt out there, it's 30,000 bucks, I would like to have that paid off in one year. So that'd be $2,500 a month extra. So now your $2,000 deficit is a $2,500 deficit. And then you find I've got $10,000 in credit card debt. I'd like that gone in a year. So there's another $800 a month. So we can build, remember, empower, educate, and encourage. You should not be in this industry and be strapped with debt, right? You shouldn't be. You should know what it costs you to live. You should know how much money you have coming in. And you should have set objectives, wise, to get you someplace. And that should be the have fun, make money thing. Because if you don't have the reason for it, maybe it's taking care of your grandkids' college education. Maybe it's taking care of your own kids' college education. Maybe it's you going back to college and getting educated. Maybe it's you supporting your significant other to get educated. I don't, whatever it is for you, it's going to be important to you. But that's what this primary aim concept is. It's understanding where you are, and, and, and that's important. So what if the real estate agent, Jeff, part-time gets in here, just kind of hanging out, and the spouse brings in enough money to pay all the bills, it's really easy for me to screw off and not do anything because there's no pressure. And sometimes we've got to put the pressure on ourselves by creating a demand. Maybe you can be happy to buy a boat for your family. You can get a boat for what, six or 700 bucks a month, a nice one? If, right? Yes. And if you want to, you know, we'll, we'll share the, the primary aim link in, in a little bit, but it's a really cool exercise. And, it's something I'm redoing mine right now um, just because I want to tighten a couple of things up. Right. So it's, it's the picture. What do you want? Where like truly it's, it's five years from now on Jan July 20th, um, 2025. Right. And you're five years older than you are right now. Your kids are five years older than they are right now. And then you get to start writing a movie the way it works for me and it works really well is I actually picture a movie and it's, it's, it's me in that movie. And I want a cool movie. I don't, I want something that's actually fun to watch, right? Cause it's me living it. Might as well decide, right? So who's in my movie with me? What kind of relationships do I have? Do I want a crappy one or I want a good one, right? What am I doing with my kids? What kind of experiences are we having? What kind of school are they going to? What are they learning? What's their life like, right? What kind of home do I have? What's at my home? What kind of adventures or, or cool things are in my home that I appreciate and enjoy five years from now, right? What are you doing on the weekends? What are you driving? What kind of places are you going? Right? All this stuff is kind of fun and you get to create it. And then remember the why? The hows don't matter, guys. It's, just, it's the why. And then you're like, okay, this is the kind of lifestyle I want. This is the kind of lifestyle I deserve. This is the kind of lifestyle my kids want to live. And this is the way it is. And this big picture is going to cost me X dollars per year to live this way. And so I can fly the way I want to fly. I can drive the way I want to drive. I can do the way I want to do. I can get people to do stuff the way I want people to do stuff. And you get to design your whole life and then figure it out. So that big picture costs X dollars per year, which is X dollars per month, right? So that might be a stretch from where you are today or might not be. And then you say, okay, that's what I want. That's what I need to live that lifestyle. I'm going to have X number of investment properties that are spitting off X number of dollars in cash that support this type of a lifestyle. That's where this all goes down to you guys, right? And then you say, okay, that's five years from now. I need a few hundred grand, whatever it is. And then you back it up four years from now. Let's say, let's say it's a $300,000 lifestyle. And then four years from now, it's a 250 lifestyle. It's a stepping stone, right? So I should be making probably 250. I want to make 300. And then three years from now, I'd like to be making a couple, 200,000. Two years from now, I should be making 175. So next year I should probably make 125,000. So let's call it 120 for easy math, right? So if I really need 120 grand this year to kind of have me on that path for that $300,000 lifestyle, then let's divide 120 into four and that's 30 grand. So to be on track for my life, I need to bring in 30,000 bucks this quarter, which is 10,000 a month, which is about two deals. Okay. So then now see how we're chunking this down. So now I need two transactions this month to keep me on track to be living the lifestyle that I deserve to be living. So now it goes into later how are we going to find two transactions this month? 
And then it becomes a simple process, right? But you have to have that path. You have to have that why. And it's got to be strong enough, right? Because the moment it's not strong enough, then one deal's fine. Or zero deals is fine too. But it involves having different things than you have right now, right? And Craig, we talk about it all the time. You've got to be happy but hungry, right? Yeah. Now let's talk about that for a second because I think this is a short-circuiting well, event in a lot of people. Sat in. Brent, Brent typed in, that's me right now. My wife covers the bills and I have been doing okay but not pushing it to get with my goals. I haven't had a strong enough why. And that's it. I appreciate your honesty there, Brent. And I want to share one of the things that some of my agents do or we've encouraged them to do and they've done. Um, I want to say it was Jackie who just got back. She took her entire family and their families she rented one of those 10 bedroom houses in Orlando at celebration, uh, not celebration, a reunion, and took them all to Disney World for a week. It probably cost her 30 grand to do that. She didn't need the money. She, she, she used that desire to put herself to work in real estate to go spend the money on that activity, right? So think about, in your case, Brent, where would you, what would you do if you really wanted to impress your wife? How would you, would you fly somewhere? Would you fly first class? Would you stay at a badass hotel and have a spa day? What would that cost? And then you share that idea with her and say, honey, here's what I want to do. Help me help you. This, I'm going to take this $15,000 vacation and we're going to fly first class to someplace cool when coronavirus is over, stay at a badass resort and just have wonderful meals for, for a four day weekend, right? Then you figure out, you do the work to figure out that what that's gonna cost, and then let's say it's 15 grand. Now you've got a why, and you've shared that why with her, and she might be nudging you a little bit, saying, dude, come on, I wanna take that trip. Does that make sense? Empower, educate, encourage. So, and, I, I, and you're, not, you're not alone. There's a lot of real people in the real estate business that have no need for real estate income. And I shared it with you, and it's like 60% of our agents are below poverty. And I'm not proud of that, but it's the truth. If whoever recruited you told you everybody does well in real estate, they're lying. Well, and a lot of people are happy with that, which which is fine too. That goes back to the self-awareness, right? We don't need you all to make a couple hundred grand a year. We need you to put a big ass smile on your face. And if four deals a year is is fine because you're making twenty grand and you could you you are responsible for that one vacation a year, high five. We love you. It's great. But don't start pretending you want to do more than that. Be okay with that, and that's great. Right. But my, my point is this is the time to do cool things. This is the time to create wealth. This is the best the market's been guys. This is the best it, it's going to be in a while. And if you're not dancing in this party, you are just, you're, you're missing out. And that's the point. So, I mean, if for no other reason, I hope that COVID woke you up to know that we're lucky. Let me tell you how lucky we are because we have friends and brokers in other states that were physically shut down, like no real estate activities. And that could have very easily been all of us, right? And that's the case. And we've been very fortunate over the last few months to have some of the best weeks and months we've ever had as a company, right? Just, but that's not the case. What, what if something happened again and you were shut down for six months? Are you okay? Right, I think the number one goal should be you better have enough cash to support yourself for six or nine months in case something happens in the future. This certainly showed that something, some black swan event can come out of nowhere and really upset the apple cart and you better be prepared for that. That should be a major why for every one of you watching right now is figure out your monthly number that Craig said and squirrel away six of those months somewhere liquid that you can access if you need to. And that should be a non-negotiable why that every one of you has to have, guys. It's just the responsible thing to do, especially if you have people relying on you. Um, it's, it, you need to do that. So that's, that's number one. And then, then start building the pools and the stuff that you want to do on top of that. But let's get, let's get realistic. We are so lucky. I mean, look at, look at how spoiled we are. Look how lucky we are to talk about, do you want to make 40 or 50 or 60 grand this quarter? Let's just go make it. Most people think that you suck because you have the ability to go do that because they're stuck getting a certain paycheck every two weeks, no matter how great they are, right? You are totally in control of your own destiny. And my joint, my push is make it the coolest one you could possibly have, because we're just lucky to be able to do what we're doing, guys. So this quarter, make it the best quarter you've ever had and figure out what that is going to be, right? But then we got to go to work. 
And this is another amazing thing about our industry. You set your schedule. You want to start work at nine, start at nine. You want to start at 10, start at 10. You want to start at seven, start at seven. You want to start at one in the afternoon, start at one in the afternoon. You want to do something. That's the problem. You've got to have something to do. So part one is knowing your strengths, having your goal. And let's say our goal is 30 grand this quarter. So let's say what schedule do we want to use for the next 90 days? Pretty simple. How many days do we want to work? I mean, how lucky are we? Eh, how about four <laughs> days? Let's just work four days this, this quarter. Okay, great. But just work those four days, right? Or work six or work five, whatever you want to, you get to choose. How many well, hours that, are you going to work? Let's be real. No, when you're busy in real estate, you're working every day, but it's a different level of work. Your phone is ringing. Your, your phone is ringing. Going, you know, so it's not, you know, what do you call it? Unicorns and rainbows. You, you are going to be, if you're doing real estate, you are arranging showings, you're setting up closings, your, your phone is ringing, you're answering incoming leads. You're not off on many days. So let's call that one out just to be. I, I'm, I'm talking from a unicorn perspective here. I'm talking about days a week that you're actually going to find business, right? right. And work is talking to people and finding out who's selling real estate right now. And I'm not talking about buying. Buying or selling is fine. But my personal mindset is you're finding listings, right? Nonstop, go get listings because listings create a lot more flexibility in your schedule to have it because everybody else is out showing your stuff, right? So how many days a week are you willing to work to go actually talk to people to bring in new business to fund your lifestyle that spits off the cash to fund the goals that you said you wanted in your life? That's it. And then how many hours a day do you want to work? What hours are those? And then take your schedule and block it off and treat it seriously. And then this last part of that line there is how many connections? What's your connection goal per week? This is a this is a point. I've talked about a couple of the coaching sessions earlier, but the, the goal is how many people are you going to connect with on a daily basis or a weekly basis? And I'll just give you the number of 20 um, because I'll give you the number 21 because it's it's cuter since we're century 21, right? So 21 connections a day or 21 connections a week. I, it doesn't, it depends on your goals, right? So your manager will help you figure that out, but this is not a contact. So if I'm like, Hey, this is Jeff. You ever, I, I noticed you live in Chicago and you have a house here in Tampa. You ever thought about, and the guy says, screw you, never call me again. Click. That to me is not really a connection, right? That was an attempt, but that's not going to help me next to my goal. So I want to have a connection. We're actually having a conversation saying, Hey, what's going on? Oh, what's going on? Thanks for calling no, we really like this house. We never thought about selling. Oh, what's going on? We're starting to have a conversation. That's a back and forth exchange of communication and dialogue that I call a connection, right? So how many connections are you committed to having on a daily basis on those days you're willing to work, which is how many per week? Guys, this is your business plan. This is a simple business plan is how many, say it's 50, say it's 20, it's 20 a day, right? it's 50 to hundred people a week you need to be coming in contact with because what's the old sales numbers? 100, 10, 5, and 1, right, Greg? Low skill, 100 people you talk to, 10 are going to turn into real leads, 5 are going to turn into appointments, 1 will turn into a, a check, right? That's just with low efficiency, brute force strength, right? And so that, so it's worse. Yeah, so you can get it down, you can get your efficiency way up on this one. And if you're tracking your numbers, you'll find that. But it's, I think you should be talking to at least 20 people a day, 10 to 20 people a day, um, is if you're serious in this business, to try to create this, make this a business there. So whatever it is for you. Yep. We do our daily team huddle at 8.30 in the morning, but it's also yep. replay on YouTube throughout the day. So whenever you start your day, we suggest you start with some something inspirational, motivational, educational. And that's why we provide what we provide on a daily basis. And then whatever time of day it is. So one of the things I'd encourage you to do, wait, Check the schedule for when Puma does the marketing guide. It's a brilliant plan. If you if you choose the social route to experiment with this quarter, and you chose to follow the marketing guide that Puma puts out, and we figured it takes about an hour and a half a day, right? To take all those activities and get them done. And if you're not willing to commit an hour and a half a day on the days you say you're going to work, then you have a problem, or you don't have a why or you don't have something else, right? Because you can do this, but my kids are busy at 8.30 in the morning. Well, then don't do it at 8.30, do it at 9.30 when their bellies are full. Well, I gotta make them lunch. Well, then do it at one in the afternoon, do it at four, do it at six when more people are home. There's no excuses here and there's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of whether you do it or not. 
see why I get the, the tough matches to deliver. <laughs> No, but but this is right. We're not even talking about what to do yet, guys. We're just talking about your your why and your when. Okay, that's that's how this breaks down so far. It's like what, who are you, why are you doing this, and how much time are you going to allocate to this business? This is how we're creating our plan. We don't even have a, a plan yet of what we're going to do yet. So let, let's walk to that. So now, so far, it's you're a high eye personality, right? Which requires a little bit of variety in your life and a little bit of fun. Right. And you want to make 30,000 bucks extra this quarter, which is 10,000 bucks a month, which is two deals a month. And then you're willing to work five days a week. You're going to work seven hours a day and you're going to take off Sunday to be with the family. And you're going to commit to talking to a hundred people a week. Now we've got the makings of a plan, right? I don't care who yet. It's because that's step two. We're still on step one of the empower. So now we're going to switch gears into step two which is the educate. So this is the pillars or the lanes that I'm gonna stay in for this quarter. And we've just wrote down a few, right? Because all of them work, but you can't try all of them and think you're gonna get good at all of them. You just can't, like to Chris's point earlier, you can't really try to get your pants on, right? And then try to put on a sweater and a hat and a shirt when you're focused on trying to get your pants on, right? So let's get our pants on effectively and efficiently and then we can throw on a jacket later right but let's get good at something so this quarter pick something pick a lane pick the pillar if you've got a huge fear if you were born and raised in your town and went to high school there or college and you're social butterfly you're members of the chambers and all of this group and you got a couple thousand people on your facebook you got followers on instagram and the thousands you're out of your freaking mind if you're not working your sphere right that just doesn't make any sense. You, that's the best asset you have to leverage is people that already know you, like you, and trust you, right? So that should be, don't even think about anything other than that. Let's just get your messaging out there and start making them talk about you and think about you when you think about real estate, right? So that's that. You can just work your sphere. Or if you don't, or if you don't want to, then pick a niche. It could be a farm. It could be a neighborhood. You know, you're going to go into some farming activities today and tomorrow. Right, so I don't care. What could your niche be, Craig? Oh, it could be ranch in the states. It could be golf front homes over a million dollars. It could okay. be duplexes. auto dealerships, duplexes. Right, fish farms. It could be anything, but it's a niche, which requires your focus. Or it's a farm that says, "I'm going to work Shady Oak subdivision." Great. But also have fun, make money. So make it something you're interested in. Right. Right. But you can't do all of this, right? You got to pick one. Or you're going to be a FISBO FURBO king, right? For sale by owners or for rent by owners. That works too, right? Everything works, guys. You just got to figure out what do you like, right? I personally enjoy for sale by owners. I like helping them down the path of realization that we're a better choice for me. I think it's fun, right? Expired listings. I think it's cool to take somebody else who couldn't do something and do it. I think it's kind of nice, right? That's the expired listing path. You, you just focus on buyers. You could focus on first time home buyers. You could focus on first time investor properties. You can, all kinds of opportunities you can and do. master all at zero down loans and just find people and put, yeah. You can become a hometown hero expert and only focus on teachers and nurses and policemen, right? You could focus just on doctors. You could just go to probate attorneys. You could just work with divorce attorneys, right? You can, there's, I can go on for, days on sources of business guys you just got to pick one that you say you know what that would be fun but you got to get in if you're going to try to become the divorce attorney liaison to the stars you need to go talk to divorce attorneys and get to know them and see if you can get some trust right and work it it's going to be a process right or you're going to go work for sphere right it's a different strategy so you get to pick one this is your choice not ours it's what you're committing to do for the next 90 days. Whichever one it is, is great. You can become a social media king. You can join every relevant group to your market that you think is fun. And you can go comment on content. Puma's going to go deep into this later with you guys. You can comment on everything. You can like a bunch of posts. You can start becoming relevant. Before you know it, you could be known as the go-to person in a week, right? If you're going to do that. Or you could be the vacant land expert to find any lots that are around. There might not be a lot of them, but there's some of them. And you get your sign up on a lot of vacant lots, and there you go. You could become an auction expert. We got a great auction division for million dollar plus properties. 
learn it, do it if you want to. It doesn't matter, right? You just got to pick one and commit to it and be damn good at it. And we're going to take you through classes on every one of these, right? So you can see which ones that you want. But please don't try to do them all. Guys, all it's going to do is create doubt, fear, and anxiety in a layered level that you're going to get doubt on one and the other and the other and the other. And you're going to spin out of control and you're going to do exactly what you've been doing. And you wasted a quarter versus this is my quarter. So for the rest of July, August, September, and October, I am going to be the master of blank. Fill I'm it in. Really good at it. And all I need really is two deals a month in that blank. Two. Which means every 14 days I need to find something. Now we got a business plan. And then I'm going to talk to X people a week. And I have two weeks to do that. So let's say it's 100 people a week. I have 200 people. So every 200 people is going to be a closed deal. Now it's, I have a plan, guys. I have a simple plan. And now I'm going to talk to 200 people in this niche, right? In this lane. I'm going to focus just there. What if it was just absentee owners that owned a piece of property that don't live here that are out of state? And you said, that's it. Blinders on. I'm not doing anything but this. And you just created your database and you just talk to people in that lane completely, you would be loaded with business. Every one of these works, right? Step two, that's step two. So step one, you know who you are, you know why you're doing this, you know when you're gonna set aside to make this happen, and then you know now who you're gonna actually talk to. Now the third part is probably one of the most important parts is who's gonna hold your ass accountable to it. And it could be your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your cat, your nurse, I don't care who it is, but somebody, your coach, has to hold you accountable to what you're doing or else there's no leverage and then there's no ability to do anything, guys. You don't have to do it unless you get committed to it. So what we do as a company is we have a coaching form that we everybody has, very few people use, right, if you're honest with it, and they should. And every quarter, people get more focused on it and we get a bunch of them for a couple of weeks and then it wanes away right? It's human nature, but I don't want that. I'm not going to let that happen anymore. Right? So this is, if you are committed to making 10,000 bucks this month, then let's do it and do your coaching and figure out how much you want to be coached on this one. And do you want a weekly, do you want a monthly, do you want to, and then there's the snapshot of what life is here and go through that Craig, and why it's relevant. If, if you're already in business and if this is your business plan, you want to make 10,000 bucks a month, it just kind of makes sense to know where you are right now. Because if you're starting at zero listings, then you're probably not gonna have four or five closings because you don't have any listings in inventory yet. But if you've already got three pending contracts that are gonna put 15,000 bucks in your pocket, then you really don't need 30 more, right? So it's just a snapshot of where you currently are. Because if you've got no pending contracts and you've got no listings, well, we all know it's a 45 day closing cycle nowadays. So don't plan on any income in July or August for that matter now, if you're starting out now, and that's just to be honest. And if whoever hired you, if you're new in real estate and they didn't tell you you're going to make no money for four or five months, they should have, because you're not, because there's a timeline unless you're walking in with business in hand, right? And that just summarizes it down to what you need to earn for the quarter. Can you see how we're how the fundamentals that we're talking about have to be in place? And the first fundamental is this. Why are you doing this? And and creating the why is just it's exhilarating. Right? Um like guy wrote back and said his wife has wanted to go to England since she was 12 years old. He wants to make enough money to take her to England for a trip. So if we can just have every one of you find that one thing. And I'm gonna encourage you, um, make it a badass trip. Fly first class. It's a long flight, I don't know where you live, but it's a long flight and you can do it. It's just a matter of, do you believe you can? And can you create enough passion? Can you pick a lane? Can you practicing it? Practice, we haven't talked about practicing yet, but practice is part of the schedule that we'll be getting to, to get you proficient at these things. And then it's just no holds barred. You're ready to rock or roll another. It, it, it really is that simple and we can't make it any more complicated. That's why this is a one page document guys, because we have worked very hard to, to trim this down. What are you doing this for? 
And because I've got, we've got agents. I've got one particular agent that's so exuberant right now on a million different directions that he has no clear goal and he's going to spin out of control doing nothing but creating a bunch of likes, right? Which gives him the feeling that he wants at the moment, but he's not generating any business, right? Because he doesn't really have to. He doesn't really have the why. There's no clear focus and it's, it's tiring, right? Because he's spinning wheels and I got to hear about the wheel spinning, which is a waste of my time and his. So I'm working to pull together the actual simple goal to say, how many freaking deals do you need this month? That's the answer, guys. And I want you to really come up with this question right now because it's not many probably. I mean, everybody who's listening to this right now and watching this right now, I would venture to bet it's not more than four, right? Right? This month. I think that looking at the group. 48 no, transactions a year. I bet it's I bet substantially less than that. Yeah, I don't, but I don't think anybody here is probably needs to do more than four transactions a month, which is a lot. That's one a week. That's, that's, that's huge guys. That's, that's exponentially that's larger. So the reality of it is it comes down to about one transact, one appointment a week. And if we go down to that simple math, Greg, I think it's important to do because if you wake up Monday morning and your goal is simple, that I will find one new person to present to this week, not get present to one new listing appointment, one new buyer appointment, not lead follow-up, new. Got it? One new appointment a week will get you to the goals that you actually want to have. The problem is if you don't have goals that you actually want to have, you're not going to go get the one appointment a week and you'll be fine with one a month or something like that. And that's just not acceptable in today's life right now, guys. It's just not. And we're not going to let you settle for not having enough savings right now. I mean, I hope that wake-up call was huge, right? You have to earn more cash. Even if you don't have to earn more cash, I promise you, you have to earn more cash. What happens when the market has a big disruption in it? It will probably happen again. Okay. Are you going to be okay? And more importantly, are you going to be in a position to take advantage of it? Okay. And that's going to require cash. So are you sitting on cash? Are you, if you're not, you need to sit on cash, get rid of the stupid debt and then start to amass cash. Even if you just sat on it for an opportunity to pounce on great, but in the meantime, wiggle out a nice trip here or there and, and put a pool in, do some landscaping, add a kitchen, do whatever, whatever makes you happy along the way, do. But I think from being a responsible human being, we have to have a lot of cash set aside to support ourselves in the event of an issue and have cash set aside to take advantage of opportunities to generate cash and wealth for yourself and for your family, right? And that's just the smart, responsible thing to do. And it's tough, right? Let's talk personal for a second, for a second, right? Well, we have... Okay. We need to have gratitude for the fact that we're in an industry that even lets us do this. Most of your friends that have jobs could never even fantasize about making an extra forty thousand dollars this quarter. Couldn't even fantasize. I mean, you, you probably shouldn't even tell them what your goals are because they're going to be jealous and hate you, <laughs> right? Because we, we talked about you get to pick the days you work, the number of hours a day you're going to work, and actually work. Right? You're always going to be available on the phone. I mean, a little moment of gratitude for the industry that we're in that lets us have this opportunity. Yep. And your entire team, because we've got a depth chart that's just huge with managers, guys, and coaches and stuff inside of our company that are all here for you, no matter what. But let, let's 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 recognize, Craig, the the challenge of coming up with a compelling why, right? Because it's you get complacent, you get in your comfort zone, and that's where people are. And to get outside the comfort zone is uncomfortable and you don't want to do it, right? We're constantly doing it too, right? Because we, we have to do it. I mean, we have to, or else you're going to get stagnant and getting stagnant is just not fun. So that's what like, we're constantly figuring out. What is the next step of lifestyle for us, right? And then you're working on it too. I'm working on it too, but it's, it's not just you guys. It's us. It's every quarter trying to figure out what is the next level? Why are we doing this? Right. It would, we could sleep in today if we wanted to, but we're not, right? Because we know that this is fun and that helping you helps us. And it's going to be a cool synergistic partnership. That's the name of the game. But until we have enough things that are motivating us to keep working to create income, right? There's not the draw to go do these things. So it's exactly the same for us as the same with you. We're all on the same team. We're all on the same boat, right? Just paddling. 
I want to take a moment to just probably it'll have to say it anyway, but it drives me crazy the amount of 100% shops out there that are charging agents a couple hundred dollars a deal and they're just proliferating misery. We take a percent of our agent's commission because we feel we earn it. And we know that our agents earn more than agents who don't pay us for it because they're supported so much by it. So remember, we are your partner. We are highly motivated for you to do well, right? Because the more well you do, the more well we do. And that's not, I'm not proud to have 200 people making poverty level income. That's, that's not our goal. So. Yep. So that's the point guys is get clear, get simple. And the reason we wanted to do this segment is this, if you don't have this form and you want it, just type in here or we'll just share it out there. I think Puma, maybe we'll put this on BE3 agents and um, just as a form that's out there for you guys to use. Cause I know we've got a lot of our friends that actually aren't with our company too watching. And so you guys are welcome to use this too because rising tide raises all boats. And that's kind of one of our mantras. On yes, just as a private form. So the personality service link is for a $12 test. It's a very scientific test and it's very, very good. I would encourage you to invest in that. Then the link in this document is to the primary aim, which is a series of questions asking you what you'd like your life to be like five years from now. And then you work it backwards, four, three, two, one, one. And then the lifestyle profile is one of the things we teach our agents to counsel buyers with, and that's a link. And then the coaching form is really, it's just a link to a form that says, of the contacts I said I was gonna make, how many did I actually? And it doesn't take too long for your coach to figure out that when you turn in your form and you say, I was supposed to make 20 contacts last week and I only made four, it doesn't take long before we stop coaching you. Because <laughs> if you're not going to put the effort in, it's just not going to happen. So you don't even need, just if you filled out the coaching form by yourself, that might just be enough accountability for you to go, holy shit, I really didn't do anything this week, right? Of the income producing activities, you might have answered, you might have put up some social media posts and set up some showings or took some buyer leads, but that's not the work we're talking about. We're talking about the schedule to spend the hour and a half or two hours a day to generate connections to people to generate new connections, guys. The biggest thing that I see pr people having problems with right now is following up with their leads, um, tricks them into thinking that they're working, okay? And following up with leads is a function of this business, but it is not what we're talking about. So you're gonna cut out, I need to make some connections this week. This is with new human beings that you've not spoken with before, right? right. Because your leads are gonna, as a result of what you did before, but you have to find new people every day. You have to, guys. If you don't find new people every day in your business, you will be out of business, right? Lead follow-up is is just a byproduct of what you did before. And once those leads buy, you're out of business unless you're continually adding new people into your pipeline. So you must, must, must add new connections in every day, in, in every week, right, to your business. And you have to. There, It's not a negotiable item or you 100% will be out of this business. And so you need to talk to, to yourself, you need to talk with your manager, you need to talk to whoever you need to, to make sure that you get clear on this one. And I think one of the, the neatest ways I heard this described was your sleep number, right? And I think yeah. it was Jody was talking about that. So the sleep number. So let's say it's 20 connections a day is what you committed to, or say it's 10 just to make it simple. And you said, okay, my job is to connect with 10 new people every day. And then that's your job. So, and then it's, a, it's an interesting curse right? That you put on yourself too. If you talk to 10 people, you're going to have a wonderful life. If you miss your 10 people, you're not going to sleep well. It's, it's going to mess up your whole mindset. It's going to screw up your whole night. It's just, it's just going to mess you up. So your sleep number is something you commit to. You need 10 people before you go to bed and that's your job. And I don't care if you got to do some direct DMs on Instagram or Facebook messenger when you're laying there, but do not end your day do not go to sleep until you hit your 10 number that is your level of commitment and if you have your why that's strong enough then post it next to your bed right post it into your i mean vision boards right are important things because for those of us who are visual get a copy of it put it on your your bathroom mirror put it on your nightstand put it on your wall the screensaver in your car on your phone put it in the dashboard of your car be reminded of that trip to europe right and just do it and just have the why because guys it's hot and you're tired and all the other excuses that come around and you're right. 
But if your why is not stronger than your excuses, you're never going to get anywhere than where you are right now. So that's the point. That's the art of real estate. So that's three hours this morning of pretty much mindset. Now we're going to take a break and let you actually think some of this stuff through. And hopefully you do during, during lunch. And then we're going to start back at, what is it, 1.30? I have yeah. one. Let me. I'm going to double check because I I just want to look real quickly here. That was one or one thirty. One thirty. One thirty. Yep. Thank you, Puma. Puma looking in the background there. Looking forward to seeing you certainly too. Yeah. So one thirty is as a quick reminder, is how to be disciplined and create the schedule. As you can see, that's our number one step, and that's Thomas Simmons and Deb, and then Puma is going to come on right after them at two thirty. And you're going to do a really cool social um, deal, social one on one, uh, 101 with um, Otis. So look forward to that. So starting back at 1 30 right here in this room. And I want to thank you guys for your attention this morning. And um, we love you guys. And thanks for being here. Yeah. Hi, Benny. Benny just said hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Talk to you later, guys. See you at 1 30. All right.